strategies, tools, resources, and yes, experts. So <clears throat> thank you for tuning in, watching. If you are watching live, great. If you are watching the replay, hashtag replay, let us know where you're watching from, city and state. We love to know where you are. So, wow, really? <laughs> There's a net this you know okay. You know, you can tell we are live and in color. Oh. Boy, I tell you. So, you know, one of the things that's been very challenging, at least this week for me, has been very challenging with uh the COVID um 19, aka coronavirus, aka the pandemic, which is requiring us to quarantine, social distance. Um, it's really challenging emotionally, especially if you've been affected by it you've lost a loved one lost friends like i have or you know a lot of people have if you're working you're a you're essential worker and you're working in this and you're seeing a lot of things but a lot of people are suffering within their businesses because if they're in a face-to-face -face environment this could really stifle or put a damper on your face-to-face -face business and with some of us we have to pivot and maybe do something different or do something new but it can be a strain on us not only emotionally, but also economically, whether it's with our job or if it's with our business that we are trying to grow and sustain. But one of the things that entrepreneurs and dualpreneurs, we have to be is resilient. If we want to be successful, resilience has to be in our vocabulary. And so with this challenging time, and it's hard for me to be feel resilient at times, you know, I had to reach into my virtual Rolodex with my friends and call, you know, I got friends that got degrees and stuff, you know, they got <laughs> PhDs, you know, they got the whole alphabet, MBA, PhDs and stuff. So I had to call my, my uh, good friend, Dr. Chantrice Holloman to, hey girl, because, hey girl, hey, girl, hey. <laughs> because one of her, if, when you hear her story, what she has been through and she is the master, she is the expert on resilience. And so with even understanding what she has been through and we've been it with no women left behind and we, I used to chase after you while you, you little short thing walking fast and I got to chase after her, run to keep up with her. And yes, I cussed her out a lot of times, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but through, through that and her story of where she is right now, um, resilience is her name. So, you know, some of us, we haven't gone through half of what she's gone through, but we are going through something. And a lot of us are suffering in silence. And so, you know, what is resilience? And what, do, what can we do to be resilient so that we can fight through the COVID um, pandemic, the quarantine, so we can be successful on the other side? If you're watching this and you have survived um, the, the quarantine and the pandemic, congratulations. But there's still resiliency that has to be able to sustain you with other challenges that may come about. So, you know, Chantrice, uh, thank you so much for taking some time out to pour into the community and to share your story, as well as sharing some tips on how to be resilient, because I don't think a lot of us really understand what resilience is. Right. Um, but thank you again for being transparent enough to share your story as well. So we're going to get right into it. Tell us about you, your story, and what are the seven ways that we can be resilient during this challenging time. Well, Tara, thank you actually for um, telling me that I was doing this to, on Tuesday. Um, what Tara does not tell you is that she is actually, uh, we are less friends and more sisters. And so that you know when you have sisters, you know, they can tell you to do stuff. They don't ask you. So essentially what she did was she called me last week and told me that this is what I was doing. And I just laughed and I said, well, only because it's you. Um, but I, I am I am excited to be here. And uh, resilience is my... Uh, is my jam right now is what I tell people. It's the one thing that I'd love to talk about more than anything else, simply because um, I don't just uh, talk about it, I be about it. So um, what I wanna do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into uh, the presentation and then there's a slide where I'll talk a little bit about myself, if that's okay. Uh, Cause I wanna make the best use of everybody's time and I'm hoping that I can share the right screen. Lord, let's see. Oh, wait, let's see. Okay, 
So hopefully you can see my screen. So today we are going to talk about um, bigger than circumstance and seven ways to be a more resilient dualpreneur. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about um, what resilience means. A lot of people hear the word and um, sometimes I'm not sure if everybody really understands what it means to be resilient. So we're going to just sort of do a quick overview of what that means. Um, then we're going to talk about the resilience roadmap. And the resilience roadmap is something that I developed um, over the past two years. And we'll talk about what happened over the past two years and how um, I moved from point A to point B. And then there will be uh, some time for some Q&A. And I have uh, a couple of goodies just for the people who are um, who are watching either live or on the replay. So we'll get to that too. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we begin, let's talk a little bit about who I am. My name is Dr. Shantri Sims Holloman. Um, and I am a resilience expert. Now, what does that mean? Um, it means that I help people um, build their resilience and overcome their fears. So the short version of my story is two years ago in March, I had a massive heart attack. It's called a Widowmaker heart attack. And I spent uh, almost three months in the hospital, partially in ICU, partially, partially in rehab. And um, I, I coded nine times. And when I was in the process of recovery, of recovering, I uh, became a partial paraplegic and a bilateral lower limb amputee. Uh, the picture that you see is uh, one of the uh, pictures I took during, decided to come back to living and come back to life. And if I thought that I understood what resilience was uh, before then, I had no clue what it meant to be resilient, what it meant to be resilient. Uh, but when I made the decision to start living my life again is really when I started uh, developing my resiliency. And uh, so that's where I am now. So now I help uh, people, primarily women, uh, because women are uh, the ones that I really want to focus on, but anybody. Um, I help women overcome their fears and become more resilient and in their life, personal life and professional life. So today we're going to do a quick overview of what it means to be resilient. So, so when you think of what it means to be resilient, you know, what are some things that come to mind? Now, if we were doing this in a, a longer session, I would have you guys respond and give me some synonyms for resilience. Um, and I would challenge you not to use the uh, thesaurus app on your phone and not cheat. But because we are short on time, we're just going to kind of get into what it is to be resilient. And so my definition of resilience is uh, your ability to easily recover from illness, depression, anxiety, or any other manner of adversity. Um, or it's your ability to channel your inner chumbawamba. Now, I am telling my age right now. So if you are um, in the Generation X like me, back in the 80s, Chumbawamba had a song where the chorus said, I, Nick, I get knocked down, but I get up again, and you're never going to keep me down. Yeah, so that's what resilience is. Resilience is getting knocked down, but choosing to get back up again and making the decision to not stay down. So um, over the past two years, um, I have developed uh, what's called the Resilience Roadmap. And the reason why I developed this is because what I used to get a lot of, people will see me out or they'll see me in social media and they assume that I have been a partial paraplegic and a bilateral lower limb amputee most of my life. And that's simply because I'm so well adjusted. And I tell them, I was like, no, it's only been two years. And then they always get this sort of deer and headlights look like, how is it that you are this well adjusted and this positive and this happy and it's only been two years and i was just like well one is my faith but we're not going to get into that right now um but then the other way is um these seven steps that i went into which helped build my resilience which i'm going to share with you today so um step one in the resilience roadmap for me 
is self-awareness. Now I tell people this is that these are actually the steps that I went over or I went through in order to get where I am today. And I'm still, you know, in the process, I have my good days and my bad days. Um, so for some of you, you might not need all seven steps. You might only need three or your steps might not go in the same order, but I want to at least give them to you so that you can, um, you can have them. So self-awareness is, um, and the, the thought that I want to leave you with is the idea of to thine own self be true. When you are trying to overcome adversity, the person that you need to be most honest with in the beginning is yourself. If you can't be honest with yourself, you're not going to develop any resiliency. OK, because you're going to always be putting things off and putting things off and and not having those those deep down honest conversations with yourself. So the one way that we practice self-awareness is by embracing who we are, what we value and what we believe. It's who we are at our most authentic self. OK, and it's who we are when all hell is breaking loose. So you know how when like you're in traffic and somebody cuts you off and you be trying to be all, you know, sweet and nice and put together, but then someone cuts you off and all of a sudden you start cussing. <laughs> That's who you are. That's your most authentic self. So being self-aware is who you are when you are at your absolute lowest. And if you can't figure out or come to grips with or embrace who you are when you are your most authentic, you will never become resilient because you won't be honest with you. Okay, so step one is to practice some self-awareness to thine own self be true, which actually comes from um, Hamlet. Uh, I'm a former English teacher, so Shakespeare is my jam too. So number one is self-awareness to thine own self be true. Number two is you have to possess a positive attitude. And this isn't just, you know, walking around, you know, with, you, you know, talking about everything is, you know, rainbows and unicorns and bunny rabbits. Um, I want to focus on watching our mouth. So the, the thing that I want you to remember is to watch your mouth. And here is a quote that I got from somewhere, but it's so relevant. The words we speak to ourselves create the bricks that we use to build the houses that we live in. So I want you to really think about that. What you say to yourself creates the environment in which you live. So if you are somebody who is super negative um, all the time, resiliency is going to be a far reach because much of our capacity to recover comes from what we say to ourselves. It's what, go, it's what goes on inside of our heads. It's those things that we say when nobody else is around and it's and and um, sometimes this is a lot harder than it uh, harder to do than it is to say. You know, it's really easy to say, oh, I'm going to speak real positive to myself. But if you don't have the practice, if you're used to being negative, if you're used to um, speaking ill of yourself, um, that's something that you're really going to have to work on. Because part of being resilient is looking at situations that look bad and finding the silver lining. It's you can you have two choices. You can either stay in a negative place or you can get up those are your only two options. There is no middle ground. Um, one of the things that my father taught me many, many years ago is that there's a difference between defeat and failure. Defeat is falling down and choosing to stay there. Failure is falling down and choosing not to. So when we choose failure over defeat, that means that we are able to see the positive side of things while defeat means that we can't. So you have to speak well of yourself and find the silver lining in a situation like right now we're in the middle of a pandemic you know there's quarantine and social i mean self distancing and all of that um and if you don't possess a positive attitude then you may find yourself depressed or your business is you're used to having your business um be face to face and right now you're not making any money because you're not face to face this is when you need to start figuring out how to pivot Okay, so I can't see you face to face, but I can talk to you via Zoom. You know, I can have um, a Zoom training. I can have a conference call. Some way, some way for you to find the positive aspect of what's going on right now. So that's number two. Number three is self-care. And I know that, that Tara is big on self-care. She is a self-care person. She likes massages and manis and petties and getting her hair done and all of that. But self-care is more than just 
taking care of us physically. So the point that I want, I want you to remember is part three is that you cannot pour from an empty cup. Um, a couple of months ago at the beginning of the year, uh, the mother of a good friend of mine passed away. And one of the most beautiful things that um, they said at her celebration of life ceremony was that she loved herself enough so that she could, so that she could love others better. She took care of herself so that she could better take care of others. And a lot of times we think of self-care as just our physical, but there are actually three uh, types of self-care. There is self-care of our body, self-care of our mind, and self-care of our soul and spirit. So when we prioritize self-care of our bodies, we do things like drink lots of water and take care of our physical needs. We get enough rest. Uh, we, we get massages or, you know, when everything starts back opening up, we can get massages. But we take care of ourselves, ourselves physically. When we prioritize self-care of our minds, we do things that put our minds at ease, like coloring or reading a good book or binge watching Netflix or whatever. Just something where we don't have to think about what's going on around us. It allows us to kind of um, disconnect from the world and go to a different place where there isn't as much stress. And when we prioritize self-care of the soul and spirit, we do things like pray or meditate or enjoy some quiet time in nature. And those are things that restore us, um, restore our souls and our spirit. Um, if you're going to be resilient, you've got to take care of yourself. Have to, have to, have to, because again, you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't put all of your time into um, working on your business or working on your job if you're exhausted all the time. Okay, so self-care is important. Number four, um, Find a resilient role model. And the point that I want to leave you with for this one is um, role models provide more than just inspiration. The very end what it is that you want to do lets you know that you can do it too. So if you are, <clears throat> um, uh, let, let's say for example that you've been laid off um, and now your side hustle has become your main hustle. <clears throat> Who can you look to? Who can you find? who has done what it is that you're doing, who has possibly been laid off, or who um, had to take whatever their side hustle was and turn it into their main hustle. Find somebody who has done what you want to do or who is doing what you want to do. Research them. Figure out what it is. What are the steps that they took? How did they make it? How do they overcome? My, um, my business coach is somebody who I know Jay, um, Tara is familiar with because She's her business coach too, I think. Um, and that's Jay Stone. And one of the things that Jay talks about is that she started her business at the end of, um, right in the midst of, I believe the first one was right after 9-11. And then she had to regroup and start again right after um, the market fell in 2008. And now it's 2020 and she's just, you know, slaying the game. But for me, she is my resilient role model. Because if she can do it, then I can do it too. So find somebody, and, and it could be somebody famous. You know, Oprah is another one. We, if you know Oprah's backstory, Oprah is not anywhere close to being where she, where people thought that she was going to be when she was growing up. So find somebody who has done what you've done, done what it is that you want to do, and copy them, research them, um, get the nuggets from them so that you can be um, resilient too. Um, number five is fear less. And yes, there's a dash in there for a reason, because we have to learn how to fear less. Fearlessness is not the absence of fear. It's the mastery of it. It's the doing it even though you are scared, even though you are afraid or even though you may be um, scared. And it's okay to be afraid as long as it doesn't prevent you from fulfilling your destiny. So the one way that we can become more resilient um, is to just face our fears and push past them. When I was in the classroom, um, I taught ninth grade. And one of the things that ninth graders are very, very uh, terrified of is speaking in front of their, their peers. And so I would always tell my students to do it scared. Because the really interesting thing about doing what you fear when you're afraid of it is that after you've done it, it's no longer scary. 
So right now, while you are trying to figure out how to pivot in your business or, you know, maintain your side hustle while you are working, think about those things that scare you, those things that you never thought that you would do. Like, like if, again, if you are somebody who is used to doing business face to face with people and, you know, in order for you to keep your business up and running, you might have to do some things online. You might have to do things that you might not have thought of. You're like, you know, I'm never going to do a Facebook live and, and, you know, or I'm never going to sell from a zoom. Well, if you want to stay in business, you might have to do that. Okay. So do it scared. Um, and understand that some fear is healthy. Um, it's the healthy fear that keeps us from, you know, jumping off a cliff and doing things that might um, actually um, put us in danger. Um, but if you are so stuck in that what if cycle, and we know that what if cycle, that's the, well, what if I do this and it falls apart? Or what if I do this and it doesn't work? Um, you may have a plan A, but there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So if plan A does not work, try plan B all the way through Z, okay? Do it scared. Don't get stuck in that cycle. Don't let it paralyze you. Uh, because when you get knocked down, you have to be able to get back up again. And one of the biggest um, things that prohibit people from getting back up is fear. Okay, so you have to fear less. Number six is, in, is rely on your inner circle. No person is your friend who demands your silence or denies your right to grow. Check the people in your circle. When you are at your lowest, and there are a lot of us right now who are really struggling and business is not going well, and you know we're dealing with the emotional uh, challenges of being inside, and like Tara said, losing family members, losing, uh, losing income, you need to have people in your circle who are going to have your back. You need to have people in your circle who are going to be able to lift you up when you cannot lift yourself up. One of the biggest enemies to self-resilience is having people in our lives who are not good for us, okay? They are negative. They are not helping us. If you are trying to lift yourself back up, you do not need someone who is constantly dragging you down. So your inner circle is your crew. Um, these are the people who will cry with you, cry for you, laugh with you, uh, laugh for you. They will fight with you, and heck, they will fight for you if they have to. If somebody comes for you, your, your crew is going, they come in swinging, hands up, dukes up, well, let's go. What you're not going to do is hurt my friend. So being resilient and building your resiliency, you need to have people who your ride or dies. These are the people who, who are down with you. They ain't going nowhere. They know you're good. They know you're bad and they know you're ugly and you trust them and they trust you. And the last um, part of the resilience roadmap is your outer circle. So if you have your inner circle, these are the people who know you know you. You know, they know where the bodies are buried. You know, if you call them one night and be like, you know, I did a thing. They, they come in with the shovel and the plastic bag and the tape, like what we got to do. Your outer circle are um, like your mentors or your sponsors or the people who will go to bat for you. They, these are the people who will give you access to rooms and tables that you would not have access to yourself. No man or woman is an island. And it doesn't matter how independent we are, none of us got to where we are without somebody else. Somebody who had a vested interest in our success had to open up the door, had to um, put in a good word and say, you know what? you really need to go over here and check out Roshana because, you know, boom, 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 here are the reasons why. Yeah, I know you don't know who she is, but I know who she is and she's who you need. So you need to lean on your outer circle. And if you don't have an outer circle, you need to start cultivating one. And some ways that you can do that is um, if you're part of uh, a church or a synagogue or a mosque, look there. If you're part of an organization like a fraternity or a sorority, look there. If you're part of a social group, look there. There are people who are willing to go to bat for you. And the really cool part about being, um, about having an outer circle is that chances are you are part of somebody else's outer circle. So you can help someone else develop resilience 
by simply uh, sharing your story because you have conquered some things that somebody else needs to conquer. So you could be some part of somebody else's outer circle. So those are the seven ways, um, just real briefly, um, that you can develop resilience um, in your business and in your life. Now, because, uh, oh, I wanna leave you with this quote, um, it's not your reaction to adversity, uh, it's your reaction to adversity, not adversity itself, that determines how your life's story will develop. It's how you respond to the rough times that determines where you go from here. It's not the actual rough times. It's how you respond. And that's where um, being resilient comes in. So because I love Tara Jackson so much, and she is my sissy, I want to give you guys a dualpreneur deal. So one of the things that I do when I am um, stuck at home is that I create stuff. So one of the things that I created was, is what I'm referring to as the Resilient and Winning Bundle. And what this is, these are two eBooks. The first eBook is Seven Ways to Build Resilience, which is the eBook version of what I just went over, but it also has some other goodies in it. It's not just the, here's what you do. It also includes the how you do it too. Um, so you will get the seven ways to build your resilience ebook and you will get the 10 ways to overcome your fear. So we talked about how number five on the resilience roadmap is fear less or overcome your fears. Well, I did another ebook which does a deep dive into 10 ways to overcome your fears. And you actually, we actually talk about and I don't know if you know this or not, but are you aware that there are only five types of fear? That's it. There's only five categories. That's all. Every fear that you have falls underneath one of these five categories. And the 10 ways to overcome your fears in that ebook, we talk about those five types. And then I give you 10 ways to overcome them. So if you go to, uh, let me see, gum.co backslash resilient, and you type in the code dual, you are going to get this two uh two ebook bundle for ten dollars for the next 24 hours normally it would be 16. actually it's 20 if you were to if you were to purchase each of the ebooks separately so the bundle already is 16 so you get you know four dollars off but if you type in the code dual in um at the website you're going to get both books for ten dollars that is 50% off what you would get, what it would be if you were to purchase them separately. And I'm only doing it because I love Tara Jackson and because uh, Tara Jackson is my sister and she's a dualpreneur and she's amazing. Um, all of you who are on, and even if you're on the, on the replay, uh, you can get uh, the dualpreneur deal for $10. And last but not least, if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Facebook. My personal page is Chantrice Holloman, and it is um, a public page, so you can follow all of my shenanigans on that. If you want to be more professional, then you can follow me at Dr. Chantrice Sims Holloman. That is my business page. And if you want to get some more of this resilience and, you know, this good information, you can join my Facebook group, which is Resilient and Winning. If you search for it on Facebook, you can find it. We right now are at, we're still small, we're about 265 members, but I am hoping to be at 500 by next week. So come on in, get in on this goodness that we have going on. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Dr. Chantrice. On Instagram, I'm Dr. Chantrice, and you can email me either at info at drchantrice.com or info at resilientandwinning.com. Tara Jackson, I am done. Boom. Awesome. That was <laughs> perfect. So, um, can I start fanning again? Because I'm hot. Okay. Yeah, you can start fanning again, and you Ooh, can Jesus. Share, you can stop sharing your stuff too. Okay. There you go, so we can see your beautiful face. That Ooh. was really fabulous. Thank you again for, ooh, you, girl, you look like you worked out. I feel like I did. I really, my God. Ooh, this whole about to be 50 thing is no joke. Good you know, Lord. Josh, that's a part of resilience, hot flashes. Ooh. If, you can live through, if you can live through hot flashes, man, you can live through anything. I'm here to tell you. My God. Okay. I can right. You can live through hot flashes. You can exactly. Come on. Y'all, y'all, y'all playing like y'all don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. I didn't even say childbirth yet. <laughs>
hot flash is <laughs> first. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> So thank you so much, Chantrice, for giving us seven steps to resilience. That was absolutely fabulous. And who else could break it down? Barney style, like Chantrice Holloman. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. I do want to open it up now to anyone that's in here that would like to ask any resilient questions to Dr. Chantrice or provide some feedback. Anyone, anyone, oh, you did so good that look, they were like, you answered. And you know what? Questions. And you know what? As, as a teacher, as a, you know, I spent 15 years teaching ninth grade, I get real nervous when my students don't have any questions. I'm like, wait. So that's one of two things. They either didn't so, hear anything that she said or they took really good notes. I mean, you know, and I'm always, you know, I always just want to check and make sure that uh there are any questions but uh um, well, that's good that here it probably means that you answered most of the questions and you gave us resources with those with that book bundle to be able to answer any more questions and we can follow you on social media and join your facebook group yes, um, you resilience can. and winning so that's awesome i do want to give those that are here an opportunity to share their business who are you what is your superpower how do you save the world with your products and services so we're gonna yeah we're gonna start with Rashana. She's looking all crazy. Yep, we're gonna start with Lish Rashana. Yep. Uh, that's no, fine. Girl. Okay. Rashana, Rashana so, wrote a book, by the way. I just want everybody to know that. Right. We're not talking about. We're not. We're not doing that right now. We're not. Doing oh, okay. I'm sorry, but Rashana wrote a book, y'all, and I ordered it, and it's gonna be here, and I'm excited. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna share about my book. I'm actually going to share about my daughter's business for Joyce Photography, LLC. She um, started her business at the age of 14. She's now 18 years old. You can find her at www.rejoicephotographyllc.com. You can also find her on Instagram, rejoice.photographyllc. And I want to plug her because she is resilient and she's winning. And I want to plug her because oftentimes I know, you know, we uh, talk about what we do, but I want to empower my daughter um, to do what she's doing. And I want to give her a plug because she, she sacrificed a lot. She bought her own cameras. She's learning the craft. She's taking extra classes. And so I want to um, just give her a shout out. I'll shout me out next time. I need, to, I need to connect you with my daughter because my daughter's a photographer too. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Because she could use another mentor, you know. I don't mind. I don't okay. mind. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna put that together. She's actually on yes. the phone right now. Cause, yeah, because I gotta talk to you about some other stuff. Some of my young dualpreneurs are okay. Awesome. <laughs> Get them while they're young. Yay! Oh, that made me cry. Okay. Oh, okay. awesome. Now let's go with Miss Garland. You on mute? Well, um. I'll start off with my jewelry business. I sell paparazzi jewelry. Um, the whole reason why I got into that was it's really ministry to encourage and empower women um, to uh, look their best. And if they don't feel that they look their best, I promise you, I got a piece of jewelry that will make you feel like you are looking your best. And then also, um, I love to write. Love books, love to read, love to write. And so now, um, it's all Chantrice's fault with this whole resilient stuff. Let me just yes, it is. That now I uh, have a website through Tara. Um, I am Garland Danielle to promote my writing business. Awesome, and we are excited about your upcoming launch for I am Garland Danielle. So you can help other people with writing. And you, what she did not say is she also does ghost writing. She does mm -hmm. consulting. She does writing for organizations. So if you need a copyright. Um, if you're a church and you need copyright, or if you're an organization and needs copyright, or if you are a professional or a dualpreneur and you need copyright for your websites, for your blogs or whatever, or you need editing services, or you need someone to write the freaking book for you. Um, Garland Danielle is the woman for you. You can go to imgarlanddanielle.com. See, I'm doing your promotion for you, girl. I'm going to need you to bring that out. <laughs> she, she, she not, like, I thought I, I didn't know. But that's okay. You keep okay. going on. You you keep coming on here. You'll know. Okay. Me too. Me too. Show them how to do it, girl. Show them how to do it. Oh, Chantrice, put okay. that book down. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's right. She is an author. So when you know, when you go and you want to talk to someone, she's already written some books. She's helped other people write books. So she's got the receipts to mm -hmm. do it. So congratulations. But Michi is going to show y'all how to do this. Awesome. Hey, girl. Hey. Girl, hey. My name is Michi Renee, and I am the owner of the Unicorn Tribe. I am an intuitive life and business coach, and I help women who want to start a business, have a business idea, maybe you're in business already, monetize on your skills, gifts, and talents in fun and aligned ways. You can reach me all over social media under Unicorn Tribe, and that's U-N-I-K-O-R-N. T-R-Y-B-E, because I am unique, and so are you. And that's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. You can find me there. And she has an upcoming website that is going to be just as resilient and beautiful and unique as she is. So we are, uh, we are excited about your upcoming website with that as well. So thank you so much. Yes. for sharing your business and of course my name is tara jackson aka madam money you may know me as the personal finance expert or a contributor to the likes of black enterprise the rookie smiley morning show as well as fox news and al jazeera news but what you may not know or what you may already know is that i own a company called srj Sir business solutions which is named after my mother, my grandfather, and my grandmother, Stephanie, Roger, and Jean. And I created this because they always wanted to start a business in excellence. And um, that's what I wanted to do with this business. And what we do is we build websites and provide business coaching to small businesses. We believe that a small business, regardless of its size, should look like a Fortune 500 company online. You should be able to be as competitive as anyone else, whether it's Coca-Cola, Walmart, or whatever. You should look prof as professional as you are. You should have a responsive website, and you should have a website that's attractive to consumers and easy for them to give you your money. So we really focus on helping to build the brand and the virtual storefront for our entrepreneurs and dualpreneurs. If you'd like a consultation, have a conversation about your website needs, just go to srjwebsites.com. That's srjwebsites.com. Click on con uh, schedule a consultation and we can have a consultation about it. Hey, I got two of my clients on here anyway. So we're looking forward to servicing your needs. Chantrice? Yes, ma'am. Beautybomb.com, boo. I appreciate it. You didn't mention Essence, I, I noticed, by the way. Oh, yeah, I've been on Essence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was at Essence Fest. Mm-hmm. Yes, she was. Yeah. Oh, see, y'all may not know. You said that so nonchalantly, but... I'm yeah, confused. like, you know, just, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. <laughs> Anytime Chantrice knows something about you, the world is going to know it about Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I am. If, if you need a hype person. If we can't toot our own, she going to do it for you. I got you. You <laughs> didn't tell me about your book, Rashana. That book been out for four years. You ain't so, tell me. It. Right. No, right. I, I posted it my on my Facebook. My publication has been out for 11. So? No, I'm just saying. She talking about she didn't know. I didn't know, I didn't know, Garland, I didn't know either, girl. I didn't know. I, I just happened to be on somebody's page. And yeah, I like them. How you like? Okay. Just wow. because you posted it on Facebook doesn't mean you We lied. I'm at, right. We, we wow. lied. Okay, I'm good. And we're arguing uh, about all the products and services we provide. That's how you do it. That's called the girl tribe. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do it. That melanin is coming out of us. I don't it's know coming out. You. It's coming out. That estrogen and that melanin tied together, woo, that's some powerful stuff right there. It's, the, it's those hot flashes. They, they jumped on. There you go. That's mm -hmm. what it is. That's, it's okay. That's it's, okay. That's okay. That What's the name of your it. book anyway while we're on it? Can Do Power. Can Do Power. And you're not going to talk about a book after we talk about resilience? Resilient. You're not going to talk about Can Do Power? Really? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Okay, so I haven't made this announcement yet. And the reason why I wasn't going to talk about my book is because I'm releasing a new book come Sunday. Okay! But, uh, but, 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 <laughs> what that got to do with you telling us about both? I'm going to tell you why. Because the first book, um, a lot of people, well, some people know and some people don't know. Four years ago, when I released my book, I was losing my mother. She mm -hmm. ended up passing away in July of that same year. Mm -hmm. It was a rush for me to write that book so she could see me as an author before she died. I didn't even know that she was going to die. 
that same year. So when I wrote the book, I didn't write it. Um, I wrote it. I literally just wrote it for my mother. It's really what it boils down to. So the book is dedicated to two of the most resilient people I know. And that's my mother and my daughter. My daughter was at, born at two pounds. That's a whole other story. So that's when that book was released. So I was in the midst of a rewrite, which is why I don't push it because I wanted it to be rewritten before I pushed it again because it has an accompanying um, prayer journal to go okay, with. Okay, so that, so it's coming soon. Your newly released book, which will be on Sunday. Well, okay. So the uh, the book I'm releasing on <laughs> Sunday is not Can Do Power. It's another book about my mom. So that's why I wasn't pushing it because I wanted to push that book first. Got you. Because I'll the buy that book too. Because the rewrite is coming after that. So I, okay, so I think you should get the original Can Do Power and mm -hmm. then you get the rewritten one later on and you get the one you that you're going to put out on Sunday. Bam. You could do that, that too. You could do that too. How about that? Just, just put Roshana and Butler in uh, Amazon and it will come up. Okay. And coming soon, she is going to have a trio for all three books that you right. are able to purchase in a bundle. In a She's bundle. To, bundle. To, She's going to monetize. That's what I do. Yes. She's going to monetize those three books together. And she's yes. going to be able to get a three book bundle she's deal. Gonna do a hey, she, look, she's going to do a pre-sale. I'm going to do a pre-sale. It hasn't even come out that. yet. Okay. All right. Don't, 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 come, don't come into the virtual <laughs> mastermind room and not expect to get Learn. See, that's why I always yeah. have my video. On, on, you're going to put it on Kindle <laughs> and, a, and a digital <laughs> download. As well, which See, I knew you. better. See that? I knew better. Won't he do it? My video on no more. No, whatever. You gonna put it back on? You gonna keep practicing? And girl, you gonna be like me? I know, like, I know, I know. I got this boo. Wait. That's how good well, Rashana, all I can say is, whoa. I guess she told you. <laughs> what you talking about? You got two books. Where's your bundle? I ain't even fooling with you. Right. Got. See that? I, I get on this. Get on this. Where's your digital <laughs> downloads? <laughs> Where's, Where's your digital what? downloads? Yo, Where's yeah. your Kindle version? Get yes. us. Where's your digital and your Kindle version? Get the Kindle her. version is on Amazon along with the books. No, but did you not, say no, that? No, not on Amazon. Where is your Kindle version? Not on yeah. Amazon. Oh, it's gonna be available. It's available oh. on her website. No, her download for, for no her access to get her book is on her website. Oh, oh amen. amen. Uh, okay. But she didn't say that. She but didn't she, say that though. But, but no, I didn't say that. <laughs> didn't talk about she didn't Rashana, say that. What she didn't say. I, 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 I say let it. Tara do all the promotion. <laughs> I, I don't do that. that. I didn't say that. <laughs> Are you still recording, Lord? Yeah, I am. Yes, yes she, she is. is. I am. Everybody needs to uh, see. I, it. I, I don't even yes. want to leave, but I gotta go teach a Bible study. Yes, because okay. we, okay. we want Miss Garland. We want you to get all the money. We don't want Amazon all to get money. all your proceeds. Okay, you're all right. Thank you, Michi. You're right. Mishi, I better call you because you're going to yes. straighten me out. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Absolutely. Let me, let, me, let me finish with her because she's going to be tired. She's going to need a break. And then I'll let her, Michi, have her. <laughs> <laughs> Look, after I'm through with you, you're going to need a vacation. You have never been bullied and, until and you've been you bullied by Tara. Ask, ask <laughs> okay. After I get done with you, you're going you gonna to need to lay down for a minute. Yeah, yeah. A nap, a vacation, right. a drink. Um, yeah, yeah. all of the above yep but yeah. i thank you ladies for joining us hope everybody right. enjoyed yeah. our banter we will see you later i love you there's nothing you can do about it and don't forget y'all wash them hands come on <laughs> bye